So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, today, we're going to be talking about what's going on in the LA market. Um, so uh, just a little bit about me. I'm Samantha Sher with Origin Point Mortgage. I've been doing mortgages for over 15 years. I'm in the top 5% of loan originators across the country. I own my own single family home, um, no other rental properties, but that is in the the future. Um, I have two kids and uh, my vision for the world is positivity and gratitude. Shannon. Awesome. I forgot to share the slides one moment. Ah, I have uh, it on my laptop, but I'm talking yeah. from, I'm talking <laughs> from some really cool glasses today that are actually have Bluetooth in them. So I don't have to wear headphones because I cannot stand oh. having them in my ears. So I, I, hear I, sound you. Okay. I totally hear you. <laughs> Uh, let me share screen. I'm sorry. Forgot to share screen as we're starting here. Yes, so. you. Guys. <laughs> um, Hi, right. Shannon. So, yeah, go, go, go to the next slide, Camille. Uh, my name is Shannon Chu. I'm a real estate agent in the Los Angeles area. I am. I've graduated to the top one and a half percent of agents nationwide. Um, as an investor, I, I now own 17 units. Come on, we'll update that later. Um, we ha I have 17 units and a self-storage facility. Um, I love Vietnamese spring rolls, and uh, my vision for the world is connection and vulnerability. So uh, we will talk a lot about, you. Um, like, Alma, you have uh, investment in real estate, so we'll kind of talk a little bit about that. Analia, you have a lot of investment, so certainly excited to um, wrap around. I have to jump at 1240. I'm going to be presenting live. In, I'm in I'm in an op office back room. It's quieter. Uh, so that's why I look, this is not my garage, nor is it my home. Um, <laughs> uh, but yes, we'd like to go around and have you guys introduce yourself. I'm on DK. So today we're going to talk, and you may already know all of this, but maybe you don't, um, of what's happening with it being a seller's market again. Um, so low inventory, the statistics, um, we'll go deep into that of the LA market and as a whole nationally, and then a little bit about what's going on with the Fed and what to expect for the future. Um, right. So, yes. So um, reality over logic, right? So logically, all of my buyers right now are saying to me, well, I'll just wait. Rates are so high right now. I'm just going to wait until rates drop. And yeah, that would make sense, right? Wait, wait till rates drop. But what happens is, right, right now, rates are higher and there's still a ton of demand. You'd think that even though the Fed raised rates 10 times in the last year, that it would actually reduce home prices, but it really hasn't at all. And Shannon will go a little bit into that. Um, most of it is just because there's so little inventory and so much demand. I was just talking to a buyer yesterday from San Diego. I think he's made like 13 or 14 offers already. And his most recent one, he's like, yeah, I got an email saying I was the sixth best price out of 40, 40 offers. Right. And so it's just, that's how ridiculous it is. Even though rates right now are almost at seven or even over seven in some cases. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go over a couple indicators of like what 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 influences real estate, right? And so um, I just came back from the mastermind with Gary Keller uh, last last week. Um, I have the privilege of being able to mastermind with the the man who makes up Keller Williams himself, Gary Keller. He's considered sort of like the grand poobah of real estate. Um, so um, we're going to go over. I'm, I, I I clipped some slides from the presentation he presents to us. Um, and it's a two-day mastermind. Um, the three lead indicators of where the real estate market usually is going is based on unemployment, inflation, and GDP. So we're going to look at those three things today. Then we're going to look at inventory nationwide. We're going to look at inventory in Los Angeles. And then we're going to kind of do, a, I'm just going to give you a quick snapshot, snapshot of home prices. And then I added a little bit of some affordability in there. And the reason I'm, um, I'm going over that is 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 instead of just saying, I mean, it's a given, like Sam said, inventory is low, right? So we're going to have a little bit of conversation about inventory is low. But but instead of just like, oh my God, why is inventory so low? And like, how are we ever going to buy a house? I think the bigger picture is um, when you invest or when you buy for yourself, um, what do you, you know, how, how hard is it going to be based on where we are today? And, and then the question everyone wants to know is like, is it going to get easier? And I can answer that in one answer, and that is no. But I like to answer it also with some statistics. 
So, um, <laughs> <laughs> let's back that up with some nice graphs. Okay. Right. Um, so unemployment right now, this is just a month on month. Uh, we are at 3.4% currently as of, as of close of April. Um, May will close the numbers out until when we finish May. Um, and when you look at unemployment based on where we were two years, three years ago with the pandemic, so one month after the pandemic shut California down, we we're at 14.7% then. Um, and now we're down to 34 Anything under 4% in the state of, in the United States is considered incredibly strong economy. So what does that tell me? That tells me that when you are ready to buy a house, everyone else is, who also is ready, they have money, you have money, everybody has money, right? They have the down payment or um, they have money to fix it up. Maybe they don't have enough money to fix it up, but at least they have the down payment, they'll put in a little bit of fixes later. Whatever that combination is, um, when unemployment is so low, it means everyone has a job. Um, can you go to the next slide, Camille? Um, so I thought this was a very interesting slide. And, and this is like, these are things I, I, I look at and track myself. I just like that it's sort of very beautifully um, presented in this particular one, job openings versus unemployment, right? And so this tells me that we have a real problem right now. And that is we have a lot of job openings, which is the orange line and um, the number of people unemployed. And you look at that 9.59 million people that, uh, there's a job opening for, and you're like, what about that 5.84 million people who are unemployed? So what 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 I think is happening is that we have a mismatch. So we have a lot of people in the wrong industries. So I'll give you an example, but a lot of these folks are not home buyers, and that is like, if you've gone to a restaurant recently, do you know how hard it is to hire a server? And or if you have a server and they're just spread thin, or you have a server and they're not very good, but like, at least they come to work, you know? So like you, you look at, we have a shortage of people in service industries like restaurants and hospitality. Um, uh, I've been hearing over, I'm reading a lot of stats that a lot of housekeepers for large hotels, um, they're, they're finding some, they're finding better work, right? Um, when, when Burger King is offering, when the minimum wage here in, this, in, in Los Angeles is $17, but starting salary at Burger King is 1850. That tells me something, right? They can't pay someone minimum wage. Um, and so there is a mismatch there. These are not home buyers. There's still a lot of home buyers uh, where their industry is hit, is hit um, in different ways. And therefore we're hearing a lot of tech layoffs, but the tech layoffs aren't really making a blip in the overall unemployment. It's just a really catchy tagline, like Facebook lays off 8,000 people, right? Um, but 8,000 people doesn't move the needle. It just sounds like a big number, right? So when you 8,000 people out of 5.84 million people in this statistic at the end of March, when you think about Facebook, it's like not, those people though will probably find a new job in the 9.59 million jobs available. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, we're we've got a we've got a robust economy right now, despite despite the the brewings of of um, a recession. Uh, okay, so GDP GDP is like the gross domestic product, how much we as a country push out into the world and purchase and consume here, and how much we import. So it's really big. We actually import way more than we export uh, as a country, and so I just thought I'd touch on this. We had two quarters of back-to-back -back, um, uh, negative growth. So you can see that was actually, that constitutes, um, quote, a recession. So we had two in the last three years. You have quarter one of 2020, which was because of the pandemic. And then we had quarter one of 2022, which, um, you know, I think there's a lot of different explanations and, and, you know, why that little blip downward for two back-to-back -back quarters, but we're back and we're in the positive, right? It's still, it's still getting a little tight though, like 1.1 1 .1, um, in terms of GDP this last quarter uh, tells me that like, can we even maintain the positive over the rest of the year? Something to think about because that will that's one indicator out of the other two, three I showed you that, um, that will potentially mean we could head into a negative growth quarter, but we need two back to back to, to be considered in a recession. Okay, and inflation. Okay, the other big indicator. 
Uh, we're currently monthly over the last um, two and a half years, three, sorry, three and a half years since January 19. Um, we're at 5.5. And when you take out energy, which is like gas and food, we're at 4.9. Not bad. We've brought it down. I think the feds wanted to bring it down from, uh, we were hovering in the seven and eight uh, at the end of last year going into this year. Um, so higher interest rates are doing what we need them to do, pushing inflation down. Um, however, and you will see how it affects home buying um, and uh, what's going on with that. So uh, next, Camille. Um, I just thought, and Analia will appreciate this as an agent. Alma, I think for yourself, when you have inventory, and, and Analia, you have inventory also, um, this is great news uh, and bad news. So it's good news because when you own more real estate, you have more wealth. When, you, when you're when you a real estate agent, it's bad news. When you see a 1.1 million transaction drop between 20. 21 to 2022. That means 1.1 million transactions did not take place in that one year transition. And that's why we're seeing the market shift so heavily. The interest rates are doing what they want them to do. They're slowing the number of transactions in real estate. They're slowing how much money we borrow at. In order for us to borrow less money, they need to raise the interest rates because that will lower inflation. Inflation, we want Essentially, the Fed is like, please save more money. Please don't spend it on anything, even things like real estate, which we like for, for you to buy. We want Americans to own real estate. But right now, in order to curb the inflation, hang on to your money. Put it in a savings account. Could you please invest it in something else that will help the economy? So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, the, and, and the projections, Gary said this at the uh, last week, and he said, I think this year we will have. 4.1 million transactions. That's a nine hundred thousand dollar drop from last last year to this year. That's nine hundred less transactions. You know how many real estate agents are going to exit the business because there isn't enough transaction to go around. But what does that also mean for a buyer today? There's just less to buy. And what does that mean for an investor today? It means there's less to invest in. So hang on with with what you have. And when you have capital, um, which we're going to talk talk about this uh, at the end. Uh, particularly around your question, Emma, with, with um, borrowing more money. Um, just know that when you want to buy more real estate, it's just going to come at a higher cost. But accessing capital is not an issue, in my opinion, in today, because we have such low unemployment. People that make good money, they have money and they want to know what to do with it. And not all of them want to go run into crypto or run into the, mark the, uh, the stock market because they've been doing that already. Now they're looking for diversity. Um, so... Uh, next slide. Um, just a quick inventory monthly. So we track inventory, like how many months of inventory do we have? This is nationwide. Um, yeah, it's overlaid with last year. Uh, March of this year, we're at 2.6 months of inventory and considered a balanced market is six months of inventory. We haven't seen uh, six months of inventory since essentially since the crash and then the uh, 2008 and then as we were building back so the crash 2008 they're like a, a ridiculous supply of inventory but then as we built it back it took about three years and then we were closer to six months of inventory and then we haven't seen it ever since mm -hmm. um so okay um, Los Angeles County, I pulled this, this inventory report. I find it very interesting. This tells you how many sales are happening. Every, they, they did a poll January, 2023, and then they have, it, it trails actually. So it does go month by month. Uh, but January 23 is what they have labeled here. But do you see how much inventory drop there has been since July of 2022? And then they break it out by price point, right? So the price point tells me that, um, uh, all price points have come down in total amount of inventory available. And that because all price points have come, uh, sorry, all price points have come down in amount to buy, we have less to buy overall, no matter where you are in LA County. Um, but that does match the statistics nationally. So we just looked at the stats of like how much inventory is there. There's less than a three month supply. Um, I, I will point something out to you on this graph. Do you see how that, like purplish, the, the 3 million and plus price range, that purple top purple color, 
do you see how big that like how many transactions are happening at three million and above? And then the next category down is two to three million, right? So as you get three million and above here in Los Angeles is considered luxury, but I think some would say that also a four million dollar house gets lumped into a forty million dollar house in this graph, right? So it's a little skewed in my opinion, because forty million dollars is definitely gonna buy you much more than a four million dollar house, right? <laughs> <laughs> but there's, if you think about the amount of inventory we have in the county, we don't have a lot of $40 million homes. We, ha we have a good number of $4 million homes, but still not, not a lot. But it, what it tells me is in the higher price points, when we have less inventory, we, wealthy people are buying and they are buying what is available. So that is, that's what, what surprises me. In in the average median house pr household, the next slide I'll tell you what the median household is. It's a million fifty seven in LA County. Um, uh, the mint, the dark mint, one million to two million. That's considered like sort of the the median house price if we take a million fifty seven, but it's also close to the next price range down, which is seven fifty to one million. But both of those, that's where most of the transaction is happening. There's a most number of homes available at that price point, most number of, of um, people buying in that price range when they come to the market. There's, there's much less $4 million buyers than there are $1.4 million buyers, right? Just as an example. And then, of course, if you are starting at a $600,000 buying level, right, you are competing against a lot of people. There's a lot, a lot of um, folks. It's usually a condo. Um, so, uh, in interesting, any, I want to go to the last, my, my next slide is the last slide, but I'd love if Alma or Analia or Sam, even Camille, my lovely assistant, if you guys want to ask me any questions, I'd love to kind of go over it there. Can you go to the next slide, Camille? It's just a quick snapshot of LA County. So the median house price in LA County as of last month is a million fifty seven. Like that's considered just the, um, the, you know, uh, taking into account everything you just saw right there. That's the median house price. Current active listings in all of the county, this, in the, every price range from 40 million down to uh, 400,000, we're at 12,600 listings. That's a lot of listings, right? Um, I was looking for a graph to sort of break it out by price, but really the last graph was the best graph I could find, right? Where you kind of see the price points. Um, I could have, uh, never mind. I like pressing data, but I was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to press the data. Uh, affordability. So in the state of California, we are a very expensive state. Um, the uh, Real Estate Association, they they use 100000 It's a very low amount to make in the city, but the average household income is 100000 How many of that 12,600 homes are considered affordable? If you are an average household income earning of 100K, it's only 3.84%. That tells us right away, we're not a very affordable city. If you make $18.50 at Burger King, you're absolutely boxed out from buying a home. And then you have to kind of ladder up. Like if you're making as a household $125,000 a year, you you barely crack 5% of homes that you could purchase in this county, right? And so... Um, and of course, if you look at the breakout of like how many five bedrooms are um, are affordable on a, on a um, salary of 100K a household income, it's almost none. How many are one bedrooms? It's like almost all of the affordability is one bedroom. And then you have two bedrooms, whether it's a condo or a house, it's pressing all the data together, right? It probably assumes it's a condo, but they don't break it out. Um, so just food for thought on that. Um, I also have the Alley County numbers, which uh, almost match this. We just have smaller in, um, inventory. But I figured I'd go with the county because it includes other things. Wait, let me, before we go there, Camille, any thoughts on this, you guys? I'm shocked. <laughs> no, uh, this is something I, I was talking with my boyfriend uh, about, like, people is still buying, like, even is unaffordable, like, you know, 3.84% is such a low percentage of people that can afford a house. Uh, but still, you get this 
you know, uh, multiple offer situation in the 900 and below market. Uh, um, um, is, is so many buyers like, you know, calling us, I want to buy. And, and, and it's like this situation that uh, against my prediction last year, when the interest rate started going up, right? And arrived over 6%, close to 7%. My prediction was, well, I guess the market will it's slow down. down. This will scare our buyers, right? But people is still buying, like you say, it's a lot of money out there. You know, after COVID, I, I think a lot of people took advantage. Some people do even better, did better in their uh, online business or working from home or, you know, trying new stuff, selling new things. And, and there's a lot of money out there. So that's what I see. Uh, yeah. People keep yeah. buying <laughs> and investing. I think right. that colored graph too that you showed was so telling, right? That people who come and talk to me to see if they can get pre-approved, it's like, there's only this many houses, right? Um, it was very, it, it made, illustrated it well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I often say this in like, this maybe so like a little bit of my philosophy on home buying. I, I, I would like, I would like to have like, I think home ownership should be accessible to everybody. And then once you own a home, then, um, uh, investing in real estate becomes a possibility. You, you usually have to own your first home before you can start investing into another something else. Whether it's your first place and you just stay, you keep it, you you cash flow it and rent it, and you buy your next place, you don't have to sell it. It's for the equity for the new place. Either no matter how you slice it, when you can start in real estate, it, it allows you to build wealth. So I, I oh, it saddens me a little. This is just sort of a feeling. It saddens me a little that. Only 3.84% of homes on an average in a six-figure income of 100K. Yes, we do know that. I, I mean, I, admittedly, I think it's low as a real estate agent um, when clients come to me. And I'm like, if you can be very realistic, I think we can get you a home. Otherwise, it, you you know, it's going to be tough. And it's your starter home. It's not your forever home. I say that so much nowadays. It's your starter home. It's not your forever right. home. Right. Yes. So, yeah. Alma, any thoughts before? Um, I'm going to turn it over to Sam. Oh, you're on mute. You're, you're on mute. <laughs> so when I was telling you that my boss is a, is a car broker, I get, mm -hmm. I get applications all day long. It's pretty much my job to say, what's your name, your social, how much do you make, and what is your mortgage? There is a lot of money out there. People are making, but it's, it's, a, it's a very small number of people. I mean... Uh, film industry, movie, all the, all of those people, they've got money. Um, yeah. So yeah, a hundred, it's like, you're barely making it anyway. But yes, I agree with that. I know. It's so sad. People will say to me, like, I can't believe that with my income, I can't like even afford a $500,000 place with a hundred thousand. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty difficult. Well, I'll share, I'll share a little bit. Um, I won't take up too much time, but when I was 30, I was only making about, um, Gosh, I want to say about 57, 60,000. Mm -hmm. And um, I did an FHA loan for my first condo. And so I did like 11.5 wow. on a 320, $320,000. And, you know, everybody told me just wait, you know, it's going to drop, it's going to drop. And I just, I was like out of people to live with. So I bought a two bedroom, two bath, and then just rented one room out, paid for the mortgage kind of thing. And that's really the only way I was able to do it too. You know, I mean, I don't make much over a hundred, but it's that in, that initial like starter. As a 30 year old, I didn't think I was gonna leave the condo anytime soon. But once you start getting a little bit more leverage, as long as you do know how to use your money wisely, it can work, it can work. But it is kind of sad that that's kind of how you got to start. You know, that's, I mean, well, it's fortunate in one way and sad in another, however you want to look at it. But yeah, anyway, there's yeah, a no, but I think you gap between like the little guy yeah. and the big guy. <laughs> Yeah. And I think you did it right, Emma. You know what I mean? Like when I said like, oh, you, you just a starter home, right? It, it's not your forever home. Yeah. It's to where you start and then you build equity and then you leverage that. You rent your room. I mean, it's, it's, the, it's the classic house yeah. hacking example where you, yeah. you pay and, down and, your expenses and you put more in your pocket. And I agree with not listening to people. The right time to buy for a person is when you can afford it. Because if I would have listened yeah. to everybody that told me, just wait, the price is going to drop. I would have missed out on all the equity that I still have on that condo because I listened to people. Yeah. I was ready. That's your, that's your right time. It's your money. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, Sam, all you. And I'm going okay. to apologize. I have to leave in a few minutes. Yeah. 
Okay, no problem. Um, so anyways, the people, uh, I'm sure all of you on the call who have loans, all have loans, their rates are like under 3% or under 4%. I read a state uh, statistic this week, 30% of homeowners are locked into a mortgage rate of 3%, under 3 and 70% are locked under 4%. I realize that there's probably still some percentage out there that has higher from the last year or so, but um, everybody's sort of a rate prisoner and they don't wanna leave, which is why the inventory is so low and nobody wants to go anywhere um, and sell. And if they feel like they are selling, where are they gonna go? Um, but at the same time, something to really consider is the fact that consumer debt is rising extremely quickly. I think somebody told me the other day he got a new Apple computer and the rate, the interest rate on his Apple account was 24.99%. So people, although they're spending very, very little who have owned homes for a couple of years or more um, are racking up a lot of debt. And so I think eventually people will start realizing that doing a cash out refinance, getting that rate a little bit higher on their mortgage, but trying to consolidate a lot of the debt that they have into a 30 year loan will maybe start to get them used to those higher rates and then eventually the inventory will start coming. Um, Camille, do you wanna to move to the next slide? Please, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, last or at the beginning of this month, the Fed raised the rate again by another quarter percent for the federal funds rate. And as you all know, already, I'm sure the federal funds rate is not actual mortgage interest rates, but typically we bake that increase in. Um, this morning, the Fed minutes came out from the meeting this month where about half the, uh, the Fed thought we should raise rates. The other half said we should keep them steady um, and not increase for, for June and July. But we'll go ahead and see what they have to say just based on inflation and everything that they're looking at. Um, the core price index report came out, CPI came out this month saying that inflation did drop, like Shannon showed, uh, to 4.9%. And I would expect in July for it to have a much bigger decrease because it's a year over year report. And um, July of 2022 had um, a 9% inflation and now we're already closer to five. So it's gonna be a much bigger drop in that CPI, which should make rates come down. Some things that are starting to pressure mortgage rates right now and having them go up over the last couple of weeks is the fact that small regional banks are having liquidity issues where they're trying to cash out of some of the bonds that they have. But they, um, when you sell off bonds, a lot of bonds, that makes mortgage rates go up. Also with the debt ceiling, trying to reach an agreement right now over the next couple of days, it's really putting a lot of pressure on mortgage rates and mortgage rates are now creeping over 7%, which is the highest I've seen. In in a really, really long time. Okay, Camille, moving on. So what to expect for the second half of 2023? If you look at every recession over the last 50, rate, 50 years, right? Interest rates go down and home prices go up. So for all of your friends and family and everybody who I talked to today is like, oh yeah, I'll just outsmart the market. I'm just gonna wait for rates to go down and then I'll buy then. I'm like, oh my gosh, you really need to think about this, right? Because if you wait, and interest rates do go down, there's gonna be way more demand. The people who don't need to sell or the people that don't need to buy, but want to buy are gonna be back in competing for that same house with very little inventory. So home prices are gonna go up, rates will go down. So anybody who's looking to buy now could always refinance later on. We're thinking rates will come down under 5% as soon as uh, quarter four or maybe quarter one of next year. And Zillow also came out uh, with some news yesterday saying, that they do expect home prices to continue to rise this year, about 4%. I think the LA market may be, I don't know if it's moving around that, that same pace or maybe um, close to it. Uh, can I just say one thing and then, and then I'm, I'm gonna drop, mo drive, drop the mic. Which, <laughs> um, and that is um, Zillow saying a 4% rise in 2023. Yes, I do believe that LA will be a, a little bit higher. But I say this a lot, and that is like, I want you to think about this, like for you, Alma, and for you, Analia, like, um, because both of you are pretty smart, like you're thinking about how to, to borrow more money or to continue to leverage your money in real estate. Right. When, when inflation, let, let's just use a pinpoint of 6%. When inflation's at 6%, I want my real estate or any purchase I make, I want the appreciation to be more than inflation year over year, right? So um, when... When it's at four, if we take Zillow's number at four, 
I actually think LA will be closer to six, six and a half right now. Um, so if we use 6%, uh, 6% as a pin, then LA at best is par with inflation. So the dollar today is worth still a dollar next year and year on year growth, right? But if we took Zillow's number, then I put a dollar in real estate, it's worth uh, inflation at 6%, uh, I'm sorry, inflation at 4%, I'm getting all confused. Inflation's at 6%. I'm only getting 4% appreciation, pardon me. Um, then I'm losing money, but am I doing better than a stock? So just think of it like, can I do yes. better than something else <laughs> in the market, right? Sure. So th instead of like, oh my gosh, then don't buy real estate. It's like, <laughs> then I was like, can you name something for me today that will appreciate better than than that, right? Like, and, and flipping might be one, you know, buying... Buying, buying in another area that they need they do you. So to make right. those, that, those two percent difference, <laughs> right? So right. just just don't like I always say, don't just say boo real estate. I was like, oh, tell me, is crypto gonna do better, right? And so I I actually don't know that answer answer that question, but <laughs> uh, so I, I I want you to just kind of put everything in relation. So and on that note, thank you guys. It's a pleasure seeing both of you, Alma, Analia pleasure pleasure my lovely assistant Camille will stay on with you and Sam thank you so much kisses bye, bye. good luck bye. Shannon <laughs> all right Camille do you want to go to the next slide oh and that was it I guess I thought that's all we had um actually before we go just to um talk about how to get more capital um to kind of answer some of your questions if you guys um so buying a home right now as an investment property, I don't know if you've heard of the um, investor program called debt service coverage ratio, which means that you could buy a property, you still would need about 20% down. So that's the other thing where you're going to get the 20%. We can talk about that in a moment. But um, if you aren't showing all of the income on your tax returns for your investment properties, it makes it hard sometimes to qualify for a full document loan. So what we have available is that debt service ratio loan for investment properties. And it doesn't even necessarily need to debt service. Like the rent doesn't necessarily have to cover the mortgage. If it doesn't, um, at the current condition of the property, it would just be a little bit higher interest rate. Um, so those rates are a little bit higher in general. They are, you know, going to be closer to eight, eight and a half. But it may be something at least to get your hands on something more is to be able to use a program like that. Um, at Origin Point, we also have a personal loan. Um, and you could go on to my website and, and, and see if that's something that would be of help to you to get 50,000. Um, you can get that, put it in your bank, let it season for two months and then go and use it to buy a new place. Um, but I think Shannon was right in saying that a lot of the, there is a lot of liquidity. A lot of people are making money and figuring out, trying to figure out how to invest it. So, um, you know, maybe even thinking about putting together a, a REIT or something like that might be something you ladies might be interested in. Um, and then also thinking about taking cash out of some of these properties that you already do own and using that cash as a down payment on the new one. So happy to answer any questions about, about all of that. Um, anyways, before you guys go, do you want to say something you learned? And Aliyah, you want to go first? You want to go to the next site, Camille, if you want to join us next time, we're going to speak every other month. So the next one we do is we'll do a comparison of two different properties. Um, usually Shannon picks a two unit and a single family and we see, you know, whatever, what's the better investment. Um, uh, you two ladies probably already know, but it's always the two unit, right? Because um, you can always get so much more for those in rent than a single family. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming today and we look forward to seeing you soon. I'll stick around if you have any other questions. Thank you. Bye. Okay. You got it. Bye.